friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky and today we are going to be turning these onions that I harvested the other day into onion powder. To be completely honest, I'm a little disappointed in the size of these onions that I got. I made some beginner gardener mistakes and it led to basically golf ball size onions, which is better than nothing because I grew all of these onions from seed. I started the seed back in January of 2021. Because these are so little and they bolted, they're not going to store well. So onions are biannuals, which means that the first year you plant the seed of an onion, the goal of that onion is to produce as big of a head as possible. The reason why it wants to grow a nice big head because that's gonna give it a lot of energy and it's gonna be able to then go dormant through that winter and then the next growing season it's gonna grow a flower or seed. And usually what happens is a farmer will get a harvest on that first year and it won't let them go into the next year to grow, grow seed. The reason why if you harvest an onion on its first year, it'll store well is because the onion is designed to store well so that it can get itself through the winter and then produce the flower the next year to keep reproducing itself. Typically the onions you buy in the winter are six months old because they were harvested in the summer. But because of some beginner mistakes, I tricked the onion into thinking that it was on its second year and it bolted. And once an onion bolts and produces seed, the onion bulb then has done its job. And so that's why it'll rot quickly because it's already produced seed and that's what the whole point of it was. So because these onions bolted, I cannot store them in my pantry. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna dehydrate them. I think it's gonna be super exciting to have some homegrown, home dried, onions so i've washed all of these i peeled them i did that on the day of harvest because it was kind of a messy project if you want to watch me harvest all these onions i'll leave a video card up here and down in the description box below i'm going to use my food processor for this to make my job a lot easier with the slicing attachment this is an 11 cup cuisinart food processor i got this as a wedding gift and i've had it for over seven years and i love this food processor you guys have seen me use it in a ton of videos i will link this down in the description box below if you guys are interested in checking it out so if you've watched any of my food dehydrating videos you know that I bought myself a five tray Excalibur dehydrator and I always say you should get the nine tray Well, my husband bought me a nine tray food dehydrator for my birthday So I'm just gonna take these onions and I'm gonna spread them out very thinly on this dehydrator sheet So I went ahead and just cut up one onion that I had in the pantry because if I'm gonna already have this out and kind of make a mess I might as well chop it up to use an onion for dinner tonight. I'm gonna make a ravioli dish. I was looking at my freezer and I need to, that's one reason why I'm not freezing these onions is because my freezer space, I need to start getting more stuff out of it so that I can start putting more stuff into it. So I had some raviolis that I had purchased, I don't know, like quite, probably five or six months ago and they need to be eaten up. So we're out here on my back patio and I have my nine tray dehydrator here, my five tray dehydrator here. There's no way I'm dehydrating these onions in my house. I one time tried to dehydrate, what was that? Oh, the garlic scapes. Don't do it. <laughs> do yourself a favor and do it outside or in your garage or something. One, I don't want the heat in my house, and two, I don't want my house smelling like very potent garlic. So I have them set at 125 degrees, and I'm guessing, because I did do those layers a little bit thick, that it's probably gonna take a good 18 to 20 hours to dry, but I'll let you guys know exactly how long it takes when we take them out of the dehydrator. So I have two dinners going right now. I'm gonna put a meatloaf in the oven for dinner tomorrow. This is just some, some homemade ketchup. I don't have a video on the ketchup yet, but as soon as my tomatoes are in and we need to make some more ketchup, I will film a video for you guys. I'm just spreading this ketchup around the meatloaf. I made this meatloaf in one of those freezer cooking meals. I only have about three or four freezer meals left in the freezer, so coming up pretty soon, I'm gonna have to do another bulk cooking day. I'm cooking the meatloaf because I'm actually cooking this chicken. This is the smashed chicken that I made in another freezer meal day. And because I have the oven on, I figured I'm just gonna go ahead and get the meatloaf cooked for tomorrow, and then all I'll have to do tomorrow after work is cook some green beans, and we'll have meatloaf and green beans. This chicken is for the pasta that I'm making for dinner tonight. We're gonna have raviolis. I figured if I have the oven on, I might as well have two things going in there. I have some homemade seasoned salt. We're gonna make kind of like an Alfredo sauce. Some homegrown garlic. I do have a pot of water here boiling for my pasta. I did go ahead and turn the stove off because when you mince garlic, I don't know the two compounds, but there's two different compounds in garlic that when you break the garlic, those compounds actually marry and they create a new compound called allicin. And that allicin is actually the part of garlic that's really, really healthy for you. But that takes time for those two molecules or compounds to come together to create that allicin. So if you smash your garlic and put it directly into a hot pot, there won't be time for that reaction to happen. So you wanna smash your garlic, let it sit for a few minutes. Ideally, it's supposed to be 10 minutes. 
but I'm probably not gonna let it sit that long. It'll just be there for a little bit. But since my pasta isn't even done yet, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn the onions off and just let them cook here. And I'm gonna get that zucchini cut up because we're gonna have some zucchini inside the pasta dish as well. This is actually a zucchini my brother gave me, which is really sweet of him. Since it's so big, I'm not gonna cook the inside part. I'll give that part to my chickens. Some of my raviolis kind of stuck together quite a bit, so we'll see if these even turn out. <laughs> So I just put some homegrown basil in there and now I'm gonna put some homegrown parsley in there. You're not in it. The chicken's done. I'm gonna let this cool a little bit. I really like one pot wonder, so I like the veggie, the meat, and the starch or whatever a lot of times to be all together if possible. It's just a lot easier for when we package things up to take for lunch later that week, or later in the week, I should say. Now this room is messy, so don't mind this room, but I need to come in here and I'm gonna get a little bit of heavy cream because I wanna thicken that sauce up a little bit. So for dinners this week, I'll probably only cook the meatloaf and this pasta and we'll eat it for dinner a few nights and for lunches a few times. Then we might have something simple in between there that doesn't have leftovers like a big salad or maybe an egg sandwich with a side of veggies or something that fresh from the garden. This is how freezer meals save me because it allows us to have like homemade home scratch cooking without having to do quite so much. Well, I don't cook everything from scratch. I did not make these raviolis. These were from Costco. So there's no judgment, you know, if you have to do cheats like that. Like I have yet to make ravioli. I would love to do it, but I just haven't done it yet. squash in right before it was going to be done because I really didn't want it to get super mushy. You know how summer squash can or zucchini can get really really mushy because it only had to cook on the stove after I put that in to thicken up for probably another four minutes. This is probably not going to be the prettiest meal I've ever made but I think it's going to taste good. I'm okay that it's a little bit saucy right now because when this goes into the refrigerator for leftovers it's going to absorb a lot more of that moisture. So I'm going to call my husband down and we're going to do a taste test. So I just gave Josh his bowl and he's gonna try it for us. He asked what he should expect and I said, cause he doesn't, he has no idea what I cook for dinner and I said, just taste it and see if you like it. I think it's good. So the zucchini or the yellow squash that's in there is from Nathan's garden and all the herbs in there are from our garden and the garlic is from our garden. Mm, oh, and the, the chicken is from a freezer meal and obviously I did not make the pasta. <laughs> that is from Costco. Well, it's really good. Oh, good. Thanks for making it. You're welcome. I'm gonna go ahead and eat dinner. My husband, what he does, oh my gosh, look at him. <laughs> I think he's hot. This meatloaf looks like it probably has another 10 minutes or so, and then that is gonna come out of the oven. I do the cooking. What my husband does when the meal cools is he actually comes down and he packages all of our lunches for us, and he does the dishes, so I don't have to worry about that. I do try to make sure I keep the kitchen clean as I go, so it's not a complete mess when he has to come down and do the dishes, but overall, I do the cooking, he does the cleaning. Now, he did have a pass when he was in school, but now that he is out of school, he gets to help me again. So the next thing you're gonna see is me taking those onions out of the dehydrator. We are back. It's been a few days since I was with you guys when I put these in the dehydrator, and I'm really happy with how they turned out. They kept their color really nicely and they're really dry. You can kind of hear how dry they are when I touch them. I was thinking about turning them into powder, but I think I'm just gonna break them up with my hands and kind of make them into onion flakes. One thing I've started doing when I'm emptying my dehydrator is I go ahead and I put a piece of parchment right up underneath my dehydrator because stuff falls through the grate and that way you're not gonna waste anything. You're gonna catch everything on the parchment paper. And then another thing I've been doing is taking the whole tray out and just dumping it out on the parchment paper like this. And that way the, it makes just putting it into the container that much easier. 
So I usually will do a couple trays at a time. So we have a total of nine trays here. I grabbed a half gallon jar because I'm hoping that it's gonna fill this half gallon jar. But I'm just gonna crunch it up just a little bit. If you're wondering why there's herbs and stuff on the top of my dehydrator, that's because I still, even with my new dehydrator, I still am always in need of more space on drying. So I went ahead and I'm using the tops of the dehydrator as a dehydrator shelf. I didn't have time to take care of all these onions and I had picked this basil and it needed to be dehydrated. So I just stuck it up there and it actually works really well. As soon as I'm done managing these onions, I am going to put that basil in the dehydrator. These onions did take about 24 hours to dehydrate. We are gonna fill this jar up. A few of you guys have asked why I don't just air dry all my herbs because you can get your herbs air dry. Like some of these are technically dry enough to put into a jar and they're totally safe. But the reason is if you just air dry them, at least in my area or for me, I can't get them so dry that when I go to crunch them up, they kind of crumble apart. They stay in a whole leaf form which takes up a lot more space. And then when you go to cook with them, it'll rehydrate in a whole leaf form. So I like to be able to crunch the herbs up so that I have them in a smaller storage container and that they're in a smaller piece in my final dish. So that's why even, that's why the ones that are even air dried on here, I will run them through the dehydrator for like an hour or two. And that just makes them nice and crisp. So I just went outside and got a basket full of more things to dehydrate. This is some calendula. I have some parsley here. I have a whole bunch of sage. This is gonna be my first time dehydrating sage. I've had sage in my garden for a long time, but I don't find myself using it because it's out there and I have to go get it when it's cold when you wanna eat sage because sage you typically use in more of like your wintery dishes. So I wanna get a bunch of it dehydrated so that I make sure I use it this winter. And I might give it away as gifts. And then I also went and got a ton of kale to make more greens powder. I have a video on making greens powder if you're interested. And then I have some chamomile flowers here that are going in. Here we have it. We have one gallon of homegrown, home dehydrated onions. Now those onions were really small and I was super disappointed when I took them out of the ground, but I'm thrilled with this harvest and this preservation. This is a lot of onions. And I know that I could probably go to Walmart and buy some dehydrated onions for a fraction of the time and effort that I put into this, but there's something super satisfying about growing something yourself and putting it into your own pantry. And it's absolutely beautiful. There's purple that's running all through here and it smells so good. This smells better than any dehydrated onion you're gonna get at the store. If you guys don't have your own garden, you could probably run down to your local farmer's market and pick up some onions at a pretty good price right now, or just dehydrate some onions that you get at the store, and I'm sure they're gonna taste way better than any store-bought ones you're gonna get. There's something so satisfying about preserving something, putting it in your pantry, and then getting to cook with it later. So I'm pretty happy with this. I got those two dehydrators filled up and they're gonna be turned on as soon as I finish this. Because those are herbs and more leafy greens, I'm gonna turn the temperature down. I had these dehydrating at 125 and I'm gonna turn it down to about 100 to dehydrate those. So now that we're done with the onion project, I have two more projects that I'm about to jump into right now. I'm actually gonna go ahead and make some rhubarb jam and some blueberry jam. I picked both those this morning and they've just been sitting here waiting for me and I can't wait to get into them. So if you're new and you wanna see those projects, go ahead and subscribe. Or if you wanna watch some of my other videos right now, they'll pop up right here. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. Thank you once again for hanging out with me in my kitchen. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.